<laughs> yeah. Saturday in the park for one of the longest running groups of all time, Chicago. Yes. I mean, come on, we all grew up listening to Chicago. <laughs> they recorded 38 albums uh -huh. and sold over 100 million records. Wow. So to reflect, is that a lot? <laughs> <laughs> to reflect on their iconic career, we are joined by founding members Lee Lochnane and documentary director Peter Bergen. Yes, we are so happy to have you both here. Hello. We have people standing up, whistling. I feel like we're at your the, concert. The person whistling's on the panel. <laughs> I'm so excited. Uh, Lee, last year, sorry to switch gears, but I just wanted to get your take on this. Your bandmate Walter announced, sadly, that he has Alzheimer's, and you two actually met in college. And I just wanted you to have the floor and give us your favorite memory with Walt. Oh, I'll tell you something. There's, there are so many uh, memories that we had in, in, and had so much fun through the years. It was It's amazing that he has been not with us for so long. Yeah. I mean, we were together uh, thick as thieves every day for probably 20 years straight. Wow. And uh, to have him get ill and uh, not be able to come with us on the road was uh, pretty shocking. Yeah. And, uh, but I think he's doing pretty well. A couple of the guys have spoken with him in the last month. And uh, if, if anybody's going to beat this thing, it will be Walt. Good to hear. Very good to hear. Yeah, well, uh, Lee and Peter, thank you so much for joining us. Lee, you contributed as a songwriter for the band. Tell us about the first song you wrote for the Chicago 7 album. Right, I wrote a song called Call On Me. And uh, by that time, the seven albums, we had a, a number of hits under our belt. So the other guys in the band, Robert, Jimmy, and Terry, and uh, Peter uh, had uh, you know, they were stars, they were songwriters. So I came in with my song thinking, you know, I'm, I'm not sure they're gonna like it or not. So you guys wanna hear my song? I, you know, <laughs> I'm very timid. And uh, but as it turned out, it became a hit. Yes. So, yeah. There that, you go. That's amazing. Now, Peter, I have to ask you, your uncle Lou Pardini was in the band for about 12 years. Now, you, did, did, you, did you know how big Chicago was before he joined the band? Because people don't people forget like you couldn't tell how big you were right mm -hmm. you know before no the internet media, I was yeah. listening to a rapper from the Fugees and he was like he didn't Proz was saying I didn't know how big we were so I started hearing people play it there was no like charts to really check interesting well the funny thing is uh, Chicago 18 came out I think the same week that I was born yes <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but growing up I mean my my dad used to play Chicago all the time and this was before my uncle had even filled in for the band uh, to begin with. So growing up, I, I had obviously listened to Chicago 9, which was the greatest hits. And uh, then, you know, little did I know that right after college, I'd be working with, with the band I listened to all my life. We've all done that. So, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah, that's right. what I did right after college. I worked for all my favorite band. That, that's amazing. <laughs> what a great story. I know. I compare that to me, like, working at Jamba Juice. <laughs> yes, and you were <laughs> Garage Valet. Still good. And Garage Valet. Thanks for, yep, uh -huh, nothing wrong with that. Hey. Lee, what were your emotions like playing on the stage again for the very first time after a long break because of the pandemic? It was the longest break we have ever had, and probably that the world has had for a hundred years since the last pandemic. And uh, but we we took 15 months, and we didn't know when or if we would ever work uh, play live again. And when we did, I, th I think it was like uh, September, August or September 2021. We came back and it was so great. When you looked out at the audience, you could tell that they were chomping at the bit to hear live music again, just be entertained, just be with other people. Yeah. Be out of the house for a chance. <laughs> just see the sky. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. Uh, Peter, you are the director of the new Chicago documentary coming out later this month. It's not the very, it's not the only Chicago documentary you have made. I wanted to know what makes this one different than the other? This one, you know, it's it's kind of an interesting story. We had thought after the last documentary that we would want to do one that kind of updated people on what was going on with Chicago since then. And then, you know, everybody was blindsided by this pandemic. And we realized probably three, four months into everybody being at home that maybe this could be something we could document somehow is to show how Chicago, a band that had never been off the road for 
53, 54 years at wow. that point um, was going to survive a pandemic. And then it came to us as well that when we were at the Venetian right before the lockdowns, they told us that Chicago was quite literally the last band on stage wow. in the United States and possibly the world. So it kind of all came together into this silver line. And that's what I'm most proud of with the movie is that it shows how they persevered through even this. And they still have toured every single year for 56 years now. Wow. How inspiring. Unbelievable. We can't wait. Lee and Peter, thank you so much for joining us on DBL. To our viewers, Chicago's new documentary, The Last Band on Stage, wow. debuts in that. limited yeah. cinemas and on video on demand September 30th. So why don't we hear Chicago's hit song? Are you ready? 25 or 6 to 4 as we had to break. We appreciate you too. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks. guys. Come back thank soon. You. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.